Okay, the last major thing I want to talk about when I talk about components of an agent based model is I want to talk about what's called the schedule. And the schedule is a description of the order of events in which the model operates. In other words, which event happens when, right? And one standard aspect of the schedule that we've already discussed is the setup and go buttons, right? So the setup tells NetLogo how to initiate the model, the go tells it how to iteratively loop, right? That's not necessarily the only way you could do the main schedule, but it's kind of a standard that, that's a, a, what they call a software pattern that works for a lot of the solutions out there, right? Uh, but there are some aspects of scheduling that can be a little tricky that we want to talk about, right? So one of the things that we often discuss is synchronous versus asynchronous updating. And what this means is if an agent changes one of its states, does it tell the other agents that change its state immediately or does it wait until after, say, a tick ends, right? Um, and the way you do that can be very different and could have different results, right? So asynchronous update rules are things like traffic basic, wolf sheep, ants, and segregation, right? So in, in, in segregation, for instance, a classic example, we don't wait until all the agents have had a chance to move before we decide where they wind up, right? We Each agent moves separately from any other agent, and then that affects the new results, right? Synchronous rules are things like cellular automata or um, a model we haven't talked about too much, but there's a model called ethnocentrism uh, that was originally created by uh, 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 Robert Axelrod, right? That basically explores uh, ethnocentric behavior and its evolution. Those models operate in a synchronous way. And what we mean by that is that each agent looks at the world around it, decides what action it's going to take, and then waits for all the other agents to make a decision and then takes an action uh, together with those agents, right? Um, and that is called synchro synchronous rules. And a lot of the cellular automata models, uh, which I'll give you an example of shortly, uh, don't even work when you use asynchronous rules uh, in, 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 to make them operate. So um, let me pause here and I'll show you an example of that. So here we have uh, the NetLogo Game of Life model. And this is a cellular automata model. And the cellular automatas are related in some ways to general agent-based models, except for the agents can't move, right? They're just kind of locked in place. In the Game of Life, each agent has the status of either being alive or dead. And in this case, this magenta color is alive and the turquoise color is dead, right? Um, and I, and and I won't tell you what the rules for how you determine life or death are right now, uh, but I've drawn one of the standard, a couple of standard patterns of the game of life that are kind of interesting called the gliders. And what these do is if you see, they basically um, re keep recreating the same pattern down into the right ones. Now the rules of life and death are very similar in the game of life. If you have, if a, if a patch, in this case a, a stationary agent, has exactly three neighbors, then they are born. Um, it, and if they have three neighbor, if they, if they don't have exactly three neighbors, uh, and if they don't have two neighbors, then they die. In other words, if they only have one neighbor, they die due to loneliness. If they have more than three neighbors, they die due to overcrowdedness, right? But this is all done in a synchronous fashion. In other words, at the beginning of every tick, we count exactly how many neighbors we are, and then we decide. We don't let one of the agents um, decide in the next, but we can modify this code in order to do that. So if we, instead of using this live neighbors that gets determined at the beginning of the step, we were simply to say count neighbors with living, we have now gone from a synchronous model to an asynchronous model. And what I want to show you is that when we do that, right, all of a sudden our results no longer hold, right? The model we had before no longer works, right? Um, so let's try it on a greater scale. So here's a random pattern rather than that glider scale I had before. And let me change this back to the way it was, right? So it's now in the synchronous form. And if we hit go forever, we kind of get these interesting patterns of behavior that happen. But now, if I switch it, set up random again, and I switch it back to the way it was with the asynchronous method, and now I hit go forever, you get very different patterns of behavior. So whether or not your model is updating synchronously or asynchronously can greatly affect your model results, and it's something you should consider when building your model.
Okay, besides synchronicity and asynchronicity, another thing you need to think about is whether the actions of the agents are being taken sequentially or in parallel, right? Um, so most of the models that we've talked about, it's been sequentially. And what we mean by that is the agents wait until the other, another agent is done before they take their own actions, right? Uh, they don't operate at the same time. In parallel actions, the agents operate simultaneously. And the termites model actually is an example of that. And I'll show you why that works. Now, in modern computer architectures, in fact, it's almost impossible under a single processor to have agents actually operating simultaneously because we just can't simulate multiple agents moving simultaneously. So instead, we synthetically kind of fake it within some of those systems, right? So in the termites case, what happens is each agent is randomly assigned to when it's going to take its action and then it operates until it changes the state of the world then another agent is chosen at random and so this kind of has the feel of parallel but it's not really uh, parallel actions and in fact it is the way that the original net logo ask used to work uh, but the problem with that was that people had a hard time writing code for that so the new ask is much more like our traditional for loop where we take each agent let it go through the whole ask loop and then we go to the next one and the old one it would go each agent would go until it hit a stopping point then another agent would start up and then that agent might go again and so it made it much more like a parallel action uh but uh but it was difficult to program it's difficult to think through how to do that now um, you can still get that behavior if you want, by the way. There is a command called ask concurrent in NetLogo, which does this kind of synthetic uh, parallelism within NetLogo. Um, so why might you want to think about this? Well, you might want to think about this because in reality, many, parallel, many actions are taken in parallel, if you will, right? So for instance, if I'm talking to a friend of mine about a, a new product, right? Somebody who's talking on the other side of the room doesn't have to wait for me to finish before they can also talk to their friend about that same new idea or new product, right, in the diffusion model case. So those actions are happening in parallel, but in many traditional uh, modeling environments, there's just no good way to write rules for that. Now, there are some interesting developments coming along with what are called general process graphic processing units, right? And these are agent, these are systems that have thousands of chips on them to allow you to simulate uh, many agents operating uh, simultaneously. And that's kind of a cool new development. Interestingly enough, it almost harkens back to some of the first work in agent-based modeling. So uh, actually, NetLogo is defended, descended from a language called StarLogo. And StarLogo uh, was written for something called the Connection Machine, which was a 256 processor machine uh, that would allow you to actually do parallel programming, right? Um, so in many ways, we, you know, we're getting back to where we were before, uh, which always seems to be the case of science.